Have you ever dreamed of starting your own podcast? Well, you can. It's simple, it's easy, and best of all, it's free. By going to anchor.fm, you can start your own podcast today and have your own show up and ready to go. Anchor's graphic user interface is user friendly and you get paid for your content by setting up a Stripe account. Go to anchor.fm. Again, that's anchor.fm and start your podcast today. Welcome to the Living Healthy Podcast, where you can improve your quality of life by making solid and informed decisions. I'm your host, Eddie Randall. Thank you for tuning in to Season 3, Episode 1 of the Living Healthy Podcast. Your continued listening and your continued support are greatly appreciated. Please feel free to check out the latest merchandise at the Living Healthy Podcast store. The link is in the description of the podcast. It's 2023 and a new year is among us. I'm very excited and looking forward to great things this year. That being said, with a new year comes new expectations, goals, ambitions, and resolutions. A new year is always an exciting time to get yourself on track to living the lifestyle that you want that will deliver the optimal health and happiness. It goes without saying that the number one resolution is to get in shape. The primary way to get in shape is to diet or to obtain a diet that will help to aid in the desired goal we're looking for. Most know about the 80-20 rule, where weight loss is 80% diet and 20% exercise. You have to speed up your metabolism by exercising while decreasing your calories and limiting them to essential proteins and nutrients. I'm only going to focus on diet in this podcast. I'm going to discuss different diet plans and you can experiment and try the one that works out best for you. I'm also going to talk about different methods on cleansing the body, as well as intermittent fasting. Tonight's podcast is entitled, New Year, New You, and the Diet to Get You in the Shape You Want. The first thing I'll talk about is fasting. Fasting is more than a religious tenet to aid in controlling your flesh and desire. Most only fast or know of fasting in regard to a surgical procedure or diagnostic tests like an EGD or colonoscopy. Fasting has many benefits, such as lowering blood pressure, lowering insulin levels, and lowering cholesterol. I remember years ago, I was watching a news program where the reporter was interviewing someone in the military. He was a high-ranking official, but he was actually involved and out there with the soldiers. He stated that he only eats one meal a day because there are so many things to do that occupy his time. I don't know why, but I've always remembered that. I've never thought about it as fasting, but that is a form of intermittent fasting. Many people don't think of fasting as a way to lose weight, but in fact, it's a great way to lose weight and it also allows your metabolism to normalize and your body to heal. Now, there's a fine line which can be complicated, but it doesn't have to be. The fine line is not eating at all. I'm talking about cutting out food altogether for five or more days in order to lose weight. What actually happens is that you would actually gain fat. If you take fasting to the extreme and go without eating for five or more days, your body will begin to seek the protein it needs to function and it will begin breaking down muscle. You'll lose some fat, but your body goes into survival mode and seeks to conserve fat. The key to properly fasting is to incorporate intermittent fasting. There are a few types of intermittent fasting. One type is time-restricted. This is where you would eat your meals in an 8-hour window and have 16 hours left without eating. If you choose this type of intermittent fasting, it's best to eat your three meals in the eight-hour period 
when you will be the most active. You will stand to gain the most from your meal while burning the maximum amount of calories. As eating at times you are least active, such as right before bed or having midnight snacks, this works against the benefits of fasting, diet, and weight loss. Then there is the 5-2 rule. This is where you would eat normally five days, of the, five days of the week, and the remaining two you'd limit your calorie intake to 500 calories. You can also have days in the week when you don't eat at all. For example, you would eat normally on a day, and the next day you don't eat at all. You would alternate these days throughout the week. Now that you've decided to implement fasting into your lifestyle, you may be wondering what you can have when you're fasting. Water is the obvious choice, as well as tea and coffee. Make sure that if you have coffee or tea, that you have them without milk and sugar. You can also add lemon to your water to give it a little flavor. As a matter of fact, lemon water acts as a detoxifier in the body. I'll get into that in a bit when I talk about cleansing. The benefits of fasting include reducing insulin levels, reducing inflammation, improving cognition, cleansing the body, and it also supports weight loss and, as mentioned, reduces cholesterol. Fasting is not for everyone, but it is highly encouraged if you're trying to lose weight or make a lifestyle change to change your health or your body. Some side effects of fasting include slight headache, mild fatigue, possible nausea, irritability, and of course, hunger. However, those are very mild side effects and they pale in comparison to the benefits that you get from fasting. In addition, you will be encouraged and emboldened to further your healthy lifestyle change and accomplish further goals through your willpower and your discipline. Now that you've decided to fast and you have chosen a method and are aware of what you need to do to get the results you're after, you have to be aware of water weight gain. It can be normal to put on one to four pounds when you start to eat normally again. The key to limiting water weight gain is to not eat until you're full. Eat high protein food, eat lean meat, and avoid high fat, greasy foods. Cleansing. Cleansing is a great thing to do to help to rid your body of toxins. And just like fasting, it can allow systems in your body to heal. I recommend juicing anywhere from one to two weeks. Some go to the extreme and go as far as a month. That may not be entirely healthy to do so, so you may want to check with your doctor. Juicing for too long could lead to dehydration, wrinkled skin, syncope, and in worst cases, malnutrition. On the safe side, I would go with one to two weeks. Some people have a small meal one day. That meal could consist of fruits and vegetables, namely a salad. So you can juice four to six times a day and have a salad for dinner. That being said, you don't want to ruin your cleanse with an oily, high-fat, high-calorie salad dressing. The best dressing you can have is a couple of capfuls of apple cider vinegar and a cap of olive oil. You can add salt and pepper for taste if you so desire. As far as a fruit salad, cubed cantaloupe, kiwis, bananas, apple, and blueberries are ideal. As far as a traditional salad, you can have spinach, carrots, tomatoes, celery, red onions, and raisins. There are many cleanses out there, and I'm going to touch on a few of them, discussing their compositions and attributes. I want to mention that all ingredients should be organic if possible. If you cannot get the organic variant, then you can settle for conventional. Both will work well, but it's better to have organic due to the pesticides that are used. Organic fruits and vegetables are sprayed with pesticides, but those pesticides are organic. Conventional fruits and vegetables are treated with some questionable chemicals that are potentially carcinogenic. With each juice cleanse I'm mentioning, you can add 16 ounces of water or so, depending on how much you want to make. The first on the list is the ever-popular Master Cleanse. This consists of lemon, cayenne pepper, and maple syrup. 
The premise behind this cleanse is that the lemon acts as a diuretic and helps to relieve your body of toxins. In addition, the antioxidants like vitamin C that are contained in lemons help to aid the liver in ridding the body of toxins. Also, it helps to boost immunity. The cayenne pepper contains capsaicin, which helps to regulate blood glucose by increasing insulin levels. It also helps to burn calories by boosting your metabolism. It can also increase body temperature and intracellular oxygen levels. So you will have more get up and go, which can result in more calories burned. The maple syrup is added just for taste, as to some, the lemon and cayenne uh, combination can be a little hard. You can mix 16 ounces of water with half a lemon, a couple of pinches of cayenne pepper, and two tablespoons of maple syrup. The thing is, make sure to rinse your mouth with water or drink some water when you're done. Repeated use of lemon juice over time can actually erode the enamel on your teeth. Next is the apple and cucumber cleanse. Cucumbers are 96% water and 4% consists of minerals, vitamins, and nutrients. But don't let the low percentage fool you. The water content is ideal for stimulating bowel movements and helping to cleanse your body of toxins. Apples are 86% water and act as it in a similar fashion. This is why in comparison to conventional GMO diets, that eating fruits and vegetables on a regular basis improves overall health. Cucumbers are a significant source of vitamin K, and one cucumber makes up 57% of the daily recommended requirement. Vitamin K is essential in blood clotting, building strong bones, and helping to regulate blood pressure. In addition, one cucumber consists of 10% of the daily recommended amount of vitamin C, which of course is good for immunity, helping to keep the skin healthy, and in helping wounds heal. Apples are a good source of pectin, and in conjunction with water, help digestive health and have the added benefit of preventing hemorrhoids. Apples can also help to prevent and soften gallstones. Apples also contain chlorogenic acid, which aids in blood pressure regulation and helps the brain to function properly. It also contains fluorizin, which can suppress tumor growth and it helps to regulate blood glucose levels. To make the apple cucumber cleanse, you can start with 16 ounces of water, blend three apples with a cucumber, strain it, and then enjoy. Some people add half a lemon or a whole lemon. If you want to make some to store in the fridge for the next day or so, you can repeat this recipe in a 6 to 2 or 9 to 3 ratio, and so on. The celery juice cleanse is another great cleanse to try. As with the previous one, celery has a huge water content, so you are rewarded with those benefits. It's great for the skin, fights inflammation, and it can also help to stimulate hair growth. It contains many minerals like potassium, which are great for bone health and can help to prevent kidney stones. Other minerals like iron, which are necessary for hemoglobin production, and magnesium, which is essential for DNA replication and repair. The celery juice cleanse is fairly straightforward. Just add several stalks to the blender or juicer and mix in your desired amount of water. And when finished, just strain it and enjoy. Now remember, just a while ago, I said to try to get organic and avoid conventional due to the uh, pesticides. Well, according to the Environmental Working Group, lab tests have shown that celery in the United States tested positive for 67 different pesticides. I'm not mentioning this to scare you away from celery. I love celery and I eat it all the time. Of course, organic. Celery is just one of those vegetables that needs to be treated in a manner that will allow us to eat it. In so many words, insects love celery. I'm not mentioning the amount of pesticides to scare you. If you know me or follow my podcast, you know that I'm all about sharing and providing information so we can all make solid and informed decisions. Next on the list is the pineapple, ginger, and honey cleanse. Pineapple is a great source of vitamin C, 
which aside from the obvious, can help with heart health and can aid in cancer prevention. It's also a good source of fiber to make you feel full. Ginger, which is one of my favorite flowering plants, contains gingerol, which aids in motility and assists in cleansing the body. It contains potassium, which is essential for cell signaling and muscle contraction. In addition, it is a good source of B6, which is great in brain health and mood regulation. Honey is not only a phenomenal sweetener, it has beneficial antibacterial and antimicrobial properties. There's an article in the Saudi Journal of Biological Sciences by Syed al Masoudi called The Antibacterial Activities of Honey. He says that honey contains phenols, hydrogen peroxide, dicarbonyls, and defensin-1, which gives honey antibacterial and antimicrobial properties. To prepare, take a pineapple, clean it and cut it into portions that can fit into your blender or juicer, then take two to three pieces of ginger, about half the size of your hand or smaller, and add them. It's not really necessary to scrape them, but you can if you want to. Once it's been blended, you can strain it and add a teaspoon of Manuka honey. Let it chill and enjoy. If you want, you can add half a lemon to the recipe. Next is the carrot, apple, and ginger cleanse. Carrots are a great source of vitamin A for eye and skin health, not to mention potassium, magnesium, other minerals, vitamins, and antioxidants. Apple and ginger benefits I've already mentioned. So uh, add six carrots to your juicer or blender, then core three apples and add in two to three pieces of ginger. And as previously mentioned, it's not necessary to scrape them. Strain when you're done, let it chill in the refrigerator for a while, and then enjoy. I wanted to take a moment to say thank you for supporting the podcast. The Living Healthy Podcast is listed on many platforms, including Anchor, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Bullhorn, and many others. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. And don't forget to check out the Living Healthy Podcast channel on YouTube. Also, if you have any questions or would like me to discuss a particular topic or you'd like to be a guest on the show, please contact me at livinghealthylivinghealthy at gmail.com. Kale, beet, and apple cleanse is up next. Kale is a great source of vitamin K and is essential in blood clotting. It also helps to promote brain health and strong healthy bones. In addition, it contains manganese, which is vital in calcium absorption and the production of sex hormones. Beets are full of folate, which is necessary for DNA and RNA production, as well as red blood cell growth and function. Vitamin B12, also known as folate, is a great antioxidant and it can help to fight against age-related macular degeneration. In the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, there's an article by Merle, Silver, Rosner, and Sedun. It is called Dietary Folate, B Vitamins, Genetic Susceptibility, and Progression to Advanced Non-Exudative Age-Related Macular Degeneration with Geographic Atrophy, a prospect cohort study. They took over 2,500 individuals with varying degrees of macular degeneration. They provided a diet high in folate and B vitamins, and at the end of their study, they determined that a diet high in folate was associated with a decreased risk in macular degeneration. Beets have a high water content, which promotes healthy skin and digestive health. They are low calorie and a great source for copper and potassium. Apples are the last ingredient and whose benefits I have previously mentioned. To make this, simply combine two to three handfuls of kale, three beets, and two apples. Strain, refrigerate until cold, and enjoy. Diet plans. The concept of dieting can seem like a cliche or a fad. However, diets literally work. 
Whether you're a woman trying to shed some pounds to fit into a wedding dress or a man that's put on a few pounds with age and you're now ready to make a serious, dedicated lifestyle change. Whatever the reason, I've researched and selected six diet plans based on their nutritional value and their health benefits. I did not mention their effectiveness because the effectiveness is self-evident. An intake of fewer calories with moderate to high protein and fiber content will yield the best results. The idea is to have the calorie intake lowered. For women, I recommend 1,200 to 1,500 calories per day, and men, anywhere from 1,500 to 1,800 calories per day. Now, I will say this. A couple of the diet plans may seem unorthodox at first, but the idea behind them and the foods offered will not only cause you to lose weight, they can help you to heal your body and turn your life around. And that's pretty much what traditional diets offer. It just boils down to your goal, your mindset, your willpower, and your desire to be healthy. The first diet plan is the pescatarian diet. This diet is great for weight loss, and it's also good for those who have arthritis and those with heart disease or looking to lower cholesterol levels. The vegetables and lean fish can lead to weight loss, and the omega-3 fatty acids from the fish can help with heart disease, as well as lowering blood pressure. A key tenet of this diet is centered around fish. The main thing to avoid in this diet is any meat other than fish, so no meat like beef, chicken, turkey, etc. You can literally have any kind of fish like sardines, tuna, pollock, salmon, and herring. Although fish sticks and fillets count, you want to avoid the frozen type, as the way they are prepared, they are loaded with preservatives and saturated fat. You can have eggs and dairy, which is great. In addition, you can have vegetables like spinach, carrots, artichokes, kale, and peas. This diet also includes whole grains like oatmeal and rice. Fruits are also included, and you can have anything from berries to watermelons. As far as the plan itself, for breakfast, you can have a cup of yogurt with blueberries, strawberries, an apricot, a banana, an apple, or kiwi. Or you can have one to two grapefruits. Another breakfast option would be oatmeal with raisins or bananas. For lunch, you could have a tuna fish sandwich or salad with lettuce, spinach, carrots, red onions, croutons, tomatoes, and raisins. For dinner, you could have a salmon filet about the size of your hand, baked or broiled, a cup of whole grain rice and chickpeas or spinach. As far as a snack throughout the day, you can have an apple with a slice of cheese or half a handful of cashews or peanuts. The next diet plan is the Ornish diet. It's not only good for weight loss, but it can also fight against diabetes and may fight prostate cancer. This diet limits your bad carbs, encourages healthy fats, and eliminates meat, which is ideal for weight loss. It eliminates refined sugars, which can lead to weight gain, so in turn, this fights against diabetes. The plant-based aspect of this diet in conjunction with limiting fats has been shown to limit or in some instances reverse PSA levels in men, thereby fighting against prostate cancer. So what can you eat on this diet? You can eat whole grains like quinoa, brown rice, and wheat bread. Fruits include grapes, cantaloupes, apples, oranges, peaches, etc. You can have egg whites, non-fat milk and yogurt, you can also have walnuts, almonds, and cashews. For breakfast, you could start out with a grapefruit or egg whites scrambled with spinach on whole wheat bread. You can also have a cup of low-fat yogurt with peach slices or pineapple chunks. For lunch, you can have a salad with kale, tomatoes, olives, red onions, and almonds. Or you could have tomato soup with some whole wheat crackers. At dinner time, you could opt for a couple of vegetable tacos or vegetable burritos. Another dinner option would include quinoa, peas, asparagus, and a salad. While researching this diet, I ran across some very insightful and useful information regarding prostate cancer 
and what this diet can do. I'm posting a link to it in the podcast. It's from the Ornish Lifestyle Medicine website, ornish.com. Now, I'm including the link only because um, a New Year's resolution is not exclusive to losing weight, but this can include things that you can do to improve your lifestyle. And if you're facing prostate cancer or an elevated PSA level, your resolution could be to confront that and fight it however you can. So that's why I'm including this link. The website includes very useful information um, along with testimonials, and I invite you to please check those out. The next diet plan is the flexitarian diet. In a nutshell, this diet is pretty much a vegetarian diet with benefits, meaning that you can eat meat and dairy if you decide to. This diet aims to limit heart disease by cutting down on dairy, meat, and animal products. Additionally, it aims to combat diabetes by the plethora of vegetables, fruits, and plant proteins. The diet includes eggs, milk, cheese, meat, vegetables, and whole grains. Breakfast includes things like a strawberry and banana smoothie. Simply blend in a cup full of strawberries, a banana, and 16 ounces of almond milk. It's nutritious and delicious. Strawberries are full of antioxidants, and they're a great source of fiber to help you feel full, and they're also low-carb. Bananas have starch, which can lower insulin levels in the body. Additionally, they're full of potassium and are a great source of fiber. Other breakfast options include whole grain, non-GMO cereals, and oatmeal. Lunch would include a Mediterranean-themed salad. This would include chickpeas, celery, red bell pepper, kale, and feta cheese. Chickpeas are full of protein, essential for bodily functions, and they also make you feel full. Celery contains a flavonoid called apigenin, which can aid in preventing or treating kidney stones. Celery also contains phytoestrogens, which can ease menopause symptoms in women. Red bell peppers are ideal for immunity as they are high in vitamin C. Vitamin C content is also great for fighting cataracts and strengthening eye health. One medium-sized red bell pepper contains 127 milligrams of vitamin C. Kale benefits I mentioned earlier. Uh, Feta cheese complements any salad, and it's great for bone health and naturally contains beneficial bacteria. The downside is that feta cheese contains a high amount of sodium. So limit your amount in the salad to less than an ounce or so. Also, remember to leave out salt from other meals that you may have that day. Another option would be a turkey burger. Make sure that the meat is organic and lean and that you have it on a whole wheat bun. The lean turkey is better for you than beef and will limit the amount of fat and cholesterol. You can top it with tomato slices, spinach, and some sliced olives if you like. For dinner, you could try a spicy cauliflower bowl. You will need cauliflower, avocado, black beans, quinoa, a yellow onion, and sriracha. Cauliflower is a great source of vitamins B, C, K, and is also a great source of folate and fiber. It can also help with skin and hair growth. Avocado has the previously mentioned vitamins, but it also contains niacin, which can help with cholesterol levels. And it contains pantothenic acid, which contains coenzyme A, which aids enzymes in fatty acid metabolism. Black beans contain healthy carbs and are a great source of protein as well as fiber. Quinoa has an adequate fiber content, and the fiber content in this meal overall will allow you to eat less. Yellow onions are low-calorie, full of antioxidants, and taste great. To prepare this, you can roast the cauliflower while the quinoa cooks. Prepare some black beans, and you can add some cayenne pepper while they're cooking. You can dice half an onion and let it simmer on low heat, and you could add some sriracha. When the cauliflower and onions are done, simply combine them. Then add them to a bowl, put some rice on the side, slice up half an avocado, and you can squeeze some lemon or lime juice for your taste if you'd like. Another dinner option would be cooked salmon, brown rice with lentils, 
and chickpeas. This meal is a great source of omega-3, fiber, vitamin A, B6, antioxidants, as well as iron. For snacks, you could have a quarter cup of almonds. Almonds are not only full of vitamins and minerals, but they're a great source of riboflavin, which is essential in breaking down carbs as well as aiding in absorbing minerals. And if you are an expectant mother, it is excellent for fetal development. A quarter cup is about the recommended daily allowance. Raspberries and yogurt are another great snack. The omega-3 in the berries can aid in lowering blood pressure and the beneficial bacteria in yogurt aids in digestive health. Peanut butter is also a great snack. As always, try to get organic and avoid ones that contain palm oil. The vitamin E in peanut butter is essential for cellular signaling in the body as well as hair and skin health. It also contains selenium, which is great for healthy thyroid function. The next diet is the Octavia diet. I'm not being paid to mention this diet. I'm bringing it up because it is popular and although it's been around, like all diets, it trends at certain times. This diet requires you to buy certain foods, which they refer to as fuelings. This diet also requires you to restrict calories. They have food that is essentially powder mixes and drinks that you can add water to. They also have bars, shakes, and cereals and things of that nature. These products contain protein, vitamins, and minerals. They even have a support system with coaches to help answer questions or help you with your diet plan. Normally, I'm all for organic and fresh fruits and vegetables. That being said, in some areas, people may not have access to these things, yet they desire a weight loss program or an efficient way to, of eating to help shed those pounds. This is why I'm mentioning this diet. It may be easier for some to pre-order products to help them get them on track to being healthier. I'm including a link to the diet in the description of the podcast. If you're interested, you can check them out. The Volmetrics diet is next. This diet is unique in such that rather than restrict calories, as in traditional diets, you can eat as much as you want. I know some may be thinking that doesn't make sense. I'll explain the premise behind this diet. This diet focuses on limiting high calorie energy dense food and focuses on low calorie energy dense food. Let me explain further. If you eat a burger and fries, which is high energy dense, meaning there are a lot of calories in that single burger and order of fries, you'll feel full for a time and then want to eat more. And before you know it, you have eaten over the recommended calorie intake for overall health for the day. In juxtaposition, if you eat a salad with spinach, carrots, red onions, blueberries, croutons, etc., you will feel full and will have consumed a lot less calories making this salad a low energy dense meal. So this diet focuses on filling up with healthy stuff and the weight will come down as long as you're consuming less calories. For this diet, you typically would be on it for seven days or longer if you decide to. In essence, this diet could simply take you into changing your life for the better as you would make healthier choices. As far as the foods you can eat, most of them I've already mentioned, as well as touched on their benefits, so I'll just mention the foods. You can eat pretty much any vegetable and fruit, as well as whole grains like brown rice, oatmeal, uh, quinoa, and whole wheat bread. Meats include chicken, cod, salmon, tuna, and turkey. The basis of this diet is that it encompasses as much healthy choices as possible. For breakfast, you can have two boiled eggs, whole wheat toast, coffee, and half a grapefruit. For lunch, you can have a salad or baked salmon with brown rice and string beans. For dinner, you can have baked chicken, steamed veggies, and quinoa. For a snack, you could opt for a cup of raisins or blueberries, cottage cheese with kiwi slices, and or the traditional apple or banana. Next up is the Noom diet. Now, um, again, I'm not being paid to mention this, but you know, I'm all about sharing useful, insightful information, and this diet 
was you know pre pretty interesting. This diet utilizes an app on your phone and categorizes food by a color coding system. This diet focuses on a psychological approach to help you to make healthier eating choices, just as the volumetric diet. It helps you to make the proper choices between high energy dense and low energy dense foods. There's also a health coach for any questions or concerns or overall support. In addition, the app offers recipes. The color code system looks something like this. Foods are categorized as either green, yellow, or red. Some examples of green foods are broccoli, cheese, cucumber, egg whites, peaches, potatoes, strawberries, watermelon, and zucchini. Some yellow foods are beans, cheese, chicken, eggs, pasta, pita bread, olives, and turkey. Red food examples include bacon, cookies, french fries, mayonnaise, beef, pork, pizza, and sausage. The premise of this diet is that 30% of food should come from green foods, 45% of food should come from yellow, and 25% of foods should be red. You simply log your food choices and you can have a better understanding of what and not, what to eat and what not to eat in order to lose weight. Breakfast choices include French toast, orange juice, and a quarter cup of blueberries. Another option could be coffee and a veggie omelet. Lunch can consist of a chicken salad or a turkey burger. Dinner choices consist of grilled salmon with rice and vegetables, or you can have a slice of pizza or two. Snacks can consist of avocado slices, broccoli, cashews, carrots, celery, grapes, papaya, popcorn, and walnuts. I've included a link to a PDF of some of the food choices you can have on this diet. The link will be in the description of the podcast. Whatever diet plan you choose to go with, first set a goal. Then check with your doctor or healthcare provider. Then implement that plan until you get the desired results. That's going to do it for episode one of season three of the Living Healthy Podcast. I hope you found this podcast informative, beneficial, and I also hope that I've motivated you to make the decision that you would like to make. Thank you for your support. Thank you for listening. And I'll see you next time. And remember, living healthy creates a better you.